Welcome back, Agent Nation. My name, of course, is Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. Ladies and gentlemen, the documentary I dropped, my last upload, it did fantastic. It feels great to work that hard on something and then have it do that well. Thank you, I appreciate you guys. For our first story of the day on some sad news, Nadex put out some frightening information Saying this on Twitter. My YouTube just got terminated because I copyrighted that King Cut guy for stealing my video live streams. I don't know what to do. Now that's a scary sight. There's a YouTuber with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and he has no one to turn to in a situation where his content was stolen and uploaded to another channel. He copyright claimed the content that was his on another person's channel and his channel got terminated because of it. Especially when you see folks like Jake Paul or companies like UMG just abuse the copyright system and then to see them just completely whiff on this one is crazy. And because I'm partnered with the multi-channel network, I can hit them up in case something crazy happens like this to me, and I'm hoping they would have better tools to solve the situation. Because if you're on your own, like I'm assuming Nadex is, unless you have some sort of contact at YouTube, you're screwed. You have to go through the usual process, which can sometimes take months, and it has for some YouTubers in the past. And so, can you imagine this is your livelihood and it gets deleted for months? The amount of money you lose out on, do you have to pick up a second job just to carry on? That's scary. I'll hit up Nade with the YouTube contact that I used to talk to, but I haven't talked to her since I was like at 150K. So I don't know if he'll help, and I don't think he's partnered with the MCN, so it seems like right now he may be out of options. It was nice though to see the 2K community come together, man. Even Duke, who's had drama with Nadex in the past, put out a tweet saying, hope you get it back. And that's nice to see that kind of camaraderie. It doesn't matter how toxic you think a guy is, whether you like him or you hate him, his whole livelihood is flashing in front of his eyes, man. So the least you could do is be sympathetic to the situation. He's not a horrible guy. People just go through shit sometimes in life. Nadex put up a follow-up tweet saying, submitted an appeal to get my channel back. It's all in God's hands now. I don't deserve this. Another tweet to follow up that saying, everything I've grinded for, everything lost. It's been a ride I'll never forget. Peace, everyone. I know he's been a controversial guy in the community, but if you guys have any contacts at YouTube, anything that you can do to help the guy out, that's not a situation you wanna see anybody in the community in, period. For our next story of the day, Ronnie2k may be getting fired. He put out a tweet saying this. All right, I kinda clickbaited with the headline, but he did tweet saying, come work with me on influencer marketing for NBA 2K. And he linked to a position description for an influencer marketing manager. And they have all the requirements or whatever, whatever. And then he dropped another tweet saying, Another great position at 2K to come work with me as a director of social media. Tell a friend who might be interested. Ronnie, you know damn well none of the friends that we could tell about this are qualified. You need like a bachelor's degree and six years of experience specifically in influencer marketing. Nobody has that, my guy. Okay, so there's two reasons I wanted to talk about this. One, people keep replying to this saying, Oh, agent, you should apply. No, guys, I literally have the, my favorite job on earth currently, okay? And I don't want another job. God forbid in an office in San Francisco, okay? Hard pass on that, my guys. Number two, so this one's actually really interesting. Ronnie2k right now is the middleman for everything 2k. So, so let's say there's an event that goes on. Ronnie2k is the one that hits up the celebrities, like the game or the NBA players, because he has those relationships. You see him post photos with all kinds of celebrities on Twitter. Ronnie2k is the one that hits up all the influencers and stuff. Ronnie2k is the one that hits up the Instagram thoughts to fill up the whole event and take up space for absolutely no reason, okay? So if you're 2K, I think this, maybe I'm just thinking into it too much, who knows? But in my mind, if they're trying to mitigate risk, on the off chance Ronnie2k just leaves in like two or three years because he has all the relationships, maybe they're trying to hire a couple people to also develop those relationships so if any one of those people leave, they would still be insulated. That's that's kind of what was going on in my mind. That's the only reason I wanted to talk about it, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I guess one of these guys is gonna act as a community manager now, although the name of the job doesn't really say that they are one. It's about damn time, 2K. <laughs> For the next story of the day, Cole the Man seems to be in some more drama, ladies and gentlemen, and it sounds pretty damn serious. Cole put out a tweet saying, Ja wants to boot us offline and affect our income, legal action will be taken, and you're going to jail. If you guys don't know what he's talking about, Hollywood, Cole the Man, Hank the Tank all live in a house in Miami. And during one of Hollywood's streams on Twitch, supposedly, allegedly, Ja came in there and booted them offline. And so it took all of the internet down for an extended period of time. And so they hopped on a periscope and they were furious about it. 
This is what it sounded like. Like, clearly, you want our dick, bro. I get it, bro. We get you viewers, man. Like, go stream on Twitch right now. You'll probably pull 200 because we're exposing your ass, bro. You fucking suck, bro. You've affected my income for five days straight, bro. You owe me $1,000. Wait, I actually exposed that I don't make $700 a day, bro. Quit lying, bro. You live in a fucking studio in a New York City, bro. You fucking suck, bro. <laughs> Now, if you guys remember the name Jaw Hit Him Up, it's because a couple months ago, I talked about him in one of my drama alerts. If you remember, there was a story of a guy that was streaming, and he was yelling at his mom or his sister or whoever it was, saying, I help you pay the rent, whatever, whatever, and they had it back and forth. It sounded something like this. In that video, I came to his defense because I know what it's like to create content in the same house you live with people in. I've done it for years, so I know what it's like and it sucks, which is why I have a place by myself now. But in this situation, there's nobody coming to your defense, my guy, because what if they're saying is true, they're, this is irreprehensible. First of all, it's a felony. You don't boot people offline, period. Second of all, he's right. That's their livelihood. That's how they make money. They need the internet. That's their job. And to take that away from them is very, very selfish. It doesn't matter what kind of drama you have with somebody. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, man. I've been hearing a lot about this character, and I, I try not to make any judgments on people unless I've talked to them or I know them just off hearsay or what other people have told me. But I've heard crazy things like you've booted in the past, that you've uploaded a video trying to teach people how to boot, all kinds of crazy I never really cared myself to investigate the situation, and I know Ja and Cole have a long history of not liking one another, but you gotta find a way to get yourself out of these horrible situations, all right? Where people are accusing you of doing certain things, because the accusations add up, and then it starts to make you look guilty. Cole uploaded some more tweets and some videos, and to summarize, he was furious about the situation, and they upgraded to business internet now, which I don't know if that's more secure, and he said he has a static IP or whatever, whatever, whatever. And I don't, I don't know, maybe I just don't understand internet much, but isn't a static IP more dangerous than a dynamic IP? Because if it's dynamic, your IP changes. If it's static, it's always the same, but I don't know. Maybe I don't know what the f I'm talking about. Regardless, it was some interesting drama for the next story of the day. All right, this is not a story. I just thought it was funny. Beast put out a tweet saying, the hate that Chick Witte is receiving is extremely uncalled for. We need the community to come together and support her and other female gamers. 102, where are you guys at? You're the pioneers of the NBA 2K League and should be welcoming, welcoming her with open arms. Hashtag, I'm with Quitta. <laughs> All right, now I know it's, I know it's up, all right guys? But the reply was hilarious. She ain't gonna let you <laughs> Long story short, there's there's a couple females, or I think one female that made it into the next pool of the 2K League. And I guess some guys are pissed off because they thought like 2K League was just adding females just because they wanted to add a female and not because she deserved it. But from all the people I talked to, she seems like a pretty comp player. Now I don't I'm not heavy into the prime community this year, so I can't tell you who deserved to make it or who did it. But I just know that this reply was hilarious. <laughs> Yo, the internet is a lovely place, man. I get that, like, I get the message Beast was trying to say, but, like, you know? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the drama didn't end there for the final story of the day. On my last video, it was a documentary. I dived deep into the stretch vig versus ISO thing. If you missed it, I'll leave a card above, link in the description, and some end screens at the end of the video. But I missed out on a bunch of stuff because there was just too much to include into one video. And so there was some tweets that I didn't really get a chance to talk about, discuss, or explore, and I wanna do that now. First up is Chris Smoove who dropped a tweet saying, retweet if this is what an open shot looks like. Chris Moore dropped a whole like 10 minute video explaining to people that if you're complaining about a buff to shot contest, then you're just taking bad shots. It shouldn't affect you. And Steezo was also mirroring the same thing in the video on my last video I uploaded. He was saying, I never, it doesn't affect me because I always shoot open. He's saying he always finds a way to get himself open in situations. Chris Moore did a follow up tweet saying, the shot contest buff in NBA 2K19 is showing us who's been getting lazy with their offenses. Forcing shots is a bad habit you've been relying on for too long. Offense is easy 
easy, you shouldn't be struggling. If you're struggling, get back on those tutorials. And that's probably true with my team, the twos, the threes on the park, but with Pro-Am, it's a little bit different. When you're playing comp, it can be really hard to get open. I feel like none of these changes we're talking about should affect Pro-Am. It was in a pretty good spot, right? There wasn't stretches shooting over top people the way we were seeing it on the park or even on my team. So just don't, don't touch Pro-Am. I just wanted to make that point. G-Man put out a tweet saying, why do stretch bigs Actually, centers in general have a way lower chance of losing the ball, getting ripped than a guard. This question hasn't been answered since the release of the game. And it makes sense. You would think the lower the ball control, the easier it is to rip, but that's not always the case. Davis uploaded a clip of a stretch big shooting in his eye. Let's take a look. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. And then I had a very similar situation happen to me on the stage. How does that go in? I, I need an explanation. How on earth does that shot go in? There's something just wrong, and there's something that needs to be changed. And if you could see these clips, and they're not like every once in a while clips, that happens pretty often when you play against good players. Swante put out a tweet saying, everyone who uses a build that isn't a guard is trash or nothing special and shouldn't be compared to someone who has a guard. They're basically admitting that they're trash or average and need bailouts, to be honest. Know yourself. Grinding quote tweeted that saying, so what you're saying is you want everybody on 2K to use a guard. This community is so fucking stupid, unfollow me. <laughs> Duke put out a tweet saying this. I can't wait for the patch. I wanna show y'all what's up. Davis responded, can't wait for you to have to sit in. No, that's grammar for sure. Can't wait for you to have to sit corner. Can't wait for you to have to finish high school. Duke responded to that saying, can't wait for you to stop being fat. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, that was all the drama for today. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like. You want more? Subscribe to the channel. Click on one of these videos, like one of them. Just click on one of them. Yeah, I was wearing a towel for like the first six takes, but I can't really think when I have the towel on, so I took it off. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.